Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Is there an example to understand the ecstasy of the Muhammadiyun paradise on earth? Example of that ecstasy? Uh, anybody who has done zikrs that uh, there are times and Allah opens a khashf and hal. These are two states in which Allah opens for the servant in which a glimpse of realities and hal in which their soul is governing what they experience. So the zikrs and those who meditate and tend the zikrs or, or have a, their meditation at home can enter into a hal. So this is all through the spiritual practices no doubt. And there's so powerful and so much energy is dressing and then that becomes the source of the food of their soul. Those whom take from this tap they can't go anywhere else. Means that once they feel the energy of these realities, meditate and feel these realities, they contemplate, do the zikrs, all these practices, that which they feel if they open their heart they know they can't find that anywhere else and that becomes a lifeline for them. That becomes then taqwa, the reality of what taqwa is. When Allah opens the heart and their heart begins to feed from that reality, they fear that they would do anything or, or do anything wrong and Allah will block that reality. So the servant is, is required to be connected to that. And that's why they stress so much, do the meditation, make the connection. Otherwise if you don't feel anything, you haven't lost anything. You come and go with the wind. But those whom feel and those whom know, they know. Those who connected and they feel the connection, they can't go anywhere else. And once they open that connection, their loyalty and their manners will determine how strong that connection remains. If any time they deviate from that, they lose the connection and very difficult to make it again. So that, that becomes something of the way and the realities of the way. So it means it, it's very much lock and key that you meditate, meditate and then the spirituality we said before the shaykh has to come and begin to open a lock, it's encrypted. And so then you have to put into your ledger a certain code, the shaykh has to put in a key and then you make your connection. When these energies begin to come, they feel it, they feel it. And based on the mannerisms and the good conduct and character, then more and more energies can come and they know that they just can't take that anywhere else. As Alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Because whatever they've established they can't go somewhere else and try to unlock and lock back in with someone else. That has to be with the shaykh and that's what governs the whole connection and the reality inshaAllah. And that's why the tariqahs have such a strong discipline inshaAllah. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Walaykum as wa rahmatullah. Sayyidi, what's the reality of Alif Meem? Alif Meem followed by Lam in Imamul Mubeen. And does it mean that everything in our life and every event in our life can change with the nazar of Prophet Wasallam? You got me on that one, I, don't, I didn't even understand that. What was it, Alif Lam Meem or Alif Meem Lam? Saying Alif Meem, Alif Meem followed by Lam in Imam al Mubeen. In Imam al Mubeen, what, is, what does that mean? Alif Meem. Oh, in spelling Imam? Are we spelling Imam? 
I have no idea, Chief. And if every event in our life can change with the nazar of Prophet Of course. The, Allah has a, a destiny and one that can be rewritten at any moment. So we've already described that just by having a life, a regular life and tune in for five minutes and listen to reality, it changed your destiny. So the shaykh can change your destiny just by what he says. Because it, it goes into your kitab, if you write it then much more powerful. Because the, the knowledge that was not in your destiny, so imagine somebody goes every day just to work and that was written for them. That has a completely different writing, rizq and whatever their paradise would be. But when Allah wants to guide them then they sit and listen to two minutes of haqqaiqs and realities. Well as a result of hearing that reality it dress their soul from a completely different door. And that's not from them but that was the inheritance of the shaykh. What the shaykh earned and was given by Allah by means of disseminating that uloom that person's destiny completely changed because of what they heard. Because once their soul heard it, it goes into Divine the Presence and asks, Ya Rabbi I heard this reality, let me to be dressed by it. And as a result it's like a feeding and it's like a, a child that who's breastfed is always linked to that person as a mother and it doesn't matter if it was his natural mother or the mother whom fed him. Once he took from that milk that's his mother and can be a, like a co-mother. So he can't even marry from the children of that person whom he took from that milk. Why? Because it's an establishment that milk is symbolic of Divinely knowledge. So when you take from a Divinely knowledge you have a bond and a link with the shaykh and as a result that uloom, that knowledge changes the destiny of the servant of what opens for them. And then as they meditate and contemplate and connect to the whole chain then these knowledges begin to flow within the heart and the soul of the servant. And that, that uloom and the knowledge of the Muhammadan haqqaiqs then have uh, immense, immense realities on how it changes completely the destiny of the soul the station and proximity of the soul to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa uh, Please forgive my ignorance. No, uh, my, no que my question is in the names of Ahmad, Muhammad, Mahmud. Word hamd comes every time. Can you please expand? Most praised one, alhamdulillah. Yeah, that each each name of Prophet has a immense reality and immense dress from Allah's divinely names. And Ahmad, and when Allah the highest name is Sayyidina Ahmad, that Allah gave to the Hamd and Alif. And that is a might of Allah is of a Divine nature, means the one whom has of a Divinely power in heaven the kingdom is Nabi Ahmad So alhamdulillah that the immense realities, immense blessings. And Muhammad is the one, is the name of Prophet for this dunya. And the, the most praised on, on this earth and in the heavens but the most praised name Sayyidina Muhammad Malik al-Hayat wa Malik al-Dunya that each of the huruf is, is opening for the one whom is the Malik al-Hayat, the king of all life and Malik al-Dunya the one whom is the king of all world of forms whether what planet it doesn't matter. Any light that manifested is the world of forms and that's under the, the governance of Muhammad and many other realities in the name of Muhammad 
So the, these are immense oceans of, of realities in which Allah put upon the huruf and these are the, the building blocks that have an infinite capacity of understanding of the greatness of Prophet inshaAllah. And that what Allah made from the huruf of the names of Prophet and mixed with Allah's Divinely attributes that uh, opens up these realities inshaAllah. That Allah took from Ahad and from his Sifat al-Samad and created the reality of Ahmad. So when we recite in our salawats, Ya Had, Ya Samad, Salli ala Ahmad, we say Muhammad but it's really from the oceans of Ahadiyya. Allah's uniqueness in which has no comparison from that unique ocean Allah brought that light and brought this ingredients. From Allah's samadiyya in which nothing sustains the one whom is self-sustained means like a, an engine that never needs to be recharged, that nothing is going to, to have to deal with it. Allah brought from Ahad and Samad and brought together and brought the reality of Ahmad and as a result has an immense power, has an immense haqqaiqs and that there is nothing like onto it. That Allah said that there's nothing like La ilaha illallah and there is equivalently nothing like Muhammadun Rasulullah That this immensity of that reality that, that there's nothing like onto it. And uh, alhamdulillah this is an immense gift from Allah to be from Ummat al-Muhammad from the nation of the most praised, the Malik al-Hayat and Malik al-Dunya, the one whom is king upon this earth and all world of form and a king within the heavens and all the heavens are subject to Muhammadun Rasulullah inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi. Walaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. See, what is the reality of the sun reflecting off of the earth and casting a red shadow on the moon, what is known as the blood moon? The sun casting the shadow, the science of it, no idea. So if you could tell us that'd be great. But they say some from the, the sunlight and, and it hits the different elements and the light that escapes is what we see of a different color or this. But the importance, the scientific part I'm not familiar with but the importance of, of the moon is Maqam al-Fardani. So if you get our book The Rising Sun it's all about the sun and the moon, rising sun of the west. It's all about the haqqaiqs of guidance and why Allah is continuously giving us the, the sign of heavenly guidance. When he's describing for us, for those who say, oh there's, there, you don't need a shaykh, well, Allah would just say, why is the, the moon following the sun? If it was not necessary you would see chaotic orbits where everything would just go in different directions. But Allah continuously draws our attention to the sun and the moon. So we have in the rising sun all about that reality. Why? Because the sun is light and is eternal, has no mass and the moon is the perfect creation, the, cre the perfect being in which you look to the moon and has no ornaments like uh, the hujaj, like hajj because the earth has all these ornaments, these beautific lights, beautific structures. But moon has taken such a pounding there's nothing on it like a, a real darvish, like old time stories of awliya, nothing, nothing on it. Everything has been pounded, everything has been smashed and as a result Allah is drawing our attention. See the perfection of this eternal light because the sun is eternal. And then look at this moon how it's been sort of beaten and tested and it just follows and it continuously follows. And as a result of the perfection of its following we find physical guidance because you look to the sun and the moon and you can tell what time it is and you can tell what month perfectly by it. You can tell the, the different months of the year by the sun and the moon reality. And as a result it's the symbol of spiritual guidance that you be like the moon, take your testing, take all of the difficulties in life and struggle 
and as a result follow the eternal light. And if you follow the eternal light and devoid yourself of yourself, what happens? People take the benefit of your reflection. So the shaykh is, is, is best and the best of shaykhs are the ones whom can move themselves out of the way to reflect those whom wish to communicate through them. Means the sons and those whom reach their eternal light, they reflect through the shaykh in his moon state that he leave and train himself how to leave so that they can reflect their reality through that. And as a result people can benefit from that reflection. So then when the moon is turning red and the colors and the hues of the moon, they have an energy and a reality that they dress upon the earth. And anything that in red you would read then the levels of the heart for the importance of colors and the different colors of the moon and the sun that those are in the levels of the heart. That when the moon has a, has a red hue it has to do with a, Imam Mahdi's tajalli because of Mars and red and Imam Mahdi salam and the, the lataif of the qalb and sir, the sir which is red has to do with struggling and how to struggle in the way of Allah and red symbolizes struggling and blood and war. So these are important tajallis and important reminders. For, for people whom are on the path and, and struggling on the path inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzatam wa yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh.